Life is an amazing podcast and it is presented and hosted by myself, Caro, and my sweet dog, Sparky. Give it up for him. So go for your life actually means to do something to your heart's content. It is a phrase used in Australia and the United Kingdom as an expression of encouragement. So this podcast is to encourage, to inspire, and to uplift. I hope you're ready. Enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of Go For Your Life. And I'm here with, well, my my boyfriend's boyfriend, as I always say. Um, Miguel has a very, um, you know, big bromance with this guy, uh, Gap de la Vega. Thank you so much for being here, Gap. Hi, Caro. Nice to have you. Nice, thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. From, uh, from Holland to Italy. Um, and I, <laughs> I had to think of the last time we were together, I nearly poisoned you with my way too hot chili um, because you were a bit sick when you were in Portugal. Do you remember? Like you were- I, I do remember. Actually, I don't think you poisoned I think you healed me. <laughs> I think because I, I was actually quite sick that yeah, time. You, I remember because you, and then you had the gig and then I was like, oh, I, I, I'll make you a nice chili. It's nice and hot. You were just like sweating so much. and. But then I eventually I could play the show that night. So yeah, you were you were. It was a great show. I, I have I have good memories for uh, uh, from that Chile, to be honest. So I don't I don't think I don't think of it as a negative thing. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah. And I like spicy food. And then of course you know we uh, Corona happened, so we haven't been able to actually be together. But this is you know at least a way of uh, of being together in the Zoom room somehow. You know. There's yeah, I, I'm very excited about it. I mean, it's. Yeah. We're lucky that we have this kind of technology that helps us to, to keep in touch and do these kind of things. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so um, so thank you so much for being here. And yeah, I really wanted to talk about a few things. Um, of course, your music and your message that's in your music and just you really um, and all you're doing and have been doing for, for quite a while. And I also saw, and this is something that I saw that you're doing on um, on Instagram, and you were just mentioning also on Facebook. Is these uh, we're in this together series, which is really cool. Like, what what is that exactly? What are you doing there? It's it started like just a like nice excuse to get in touch with my friends that were basically in the same situation I was mm -hmm. uh, just before coronavirus happened. I just released a new I just released a new record. It came out in January twenty fourth, twenty twenty. And lots of friends of mine were basically in the same situation. We couldn't tour, we couldn't play shows, we couldn't promote our music and do anything that was basically our nature. <laughs> and so I thought, well, it's a nice excuse to chat with my friends and keep a conversation going about all these things <laughs> and, you know, share this moment like it's a sort of catharsis uh, somehow. Yeah. So, like, we talk about it. So... Um, and it started like a few months ago, actually in the first lockdown. Um, then in the summer, it was a break and eventually I resumed it. And now it's been 15 episodes, something like yeah, that. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like guests from all over the world. Mm. Basically. Well, not all over the world, but like yeah. uh, many different countries. That's so cool. So you're, and, and so it's still ongoing, right? You can still... You can as far as I can, as I can keep it going I, I think i'm gonna do it i i'm enjoying it it's a little bit of work to be honest but uh, it's also very uh, enjoying yeah and do, is it is it like is it a specific is it like every wednesday every week or something or like how i try to keep it on wednesday every week at 9 p.m central european mm -hmm. time uh but of course like if some guests can't do that on that day or that time because maybe time zones or something like that. Maybe yeah, so it's a I bit can move it. For now, I didn't have the chance to move it. And um, for now, it's Wednesday every Wednesday at night. Yeah, super cool. Well, I'll definitely put it also in the in the show notes and people can check it out. And thank you. I listened to a few uh, episodes. I really loved uh, the one with Nelson uh, from We Both. Yeah. Yes. Um, who's also like I think you know would I say boyfriend or at least a, a crush Miguel has. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I know. I, get. No. I, I actually never, I never heard about uh, We Bless This Mess before uh, Miguel told me about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, so. they're just amazing. Uh, the music yeah. is great, and he's such a great guy. Uh, you know, I've never met him, but I hope to meet him one day. And, you know, that was a really nice one. I really liked it. And I think I was listening to one. Is her name Jenna? Jenny or Jenna? Uh, Jen, uh, Jen Fiorentino. 
Jen, yeah, Jen. Yeah, yeah, from Canada. I was like, I want to be your friend. She said, <laughs> <laughs> she is nice. She's very nice. Yeah, really cool, really cool. Um, yeah. So it's it's and and I think we were just saying this to each other before starting this episode was very much about you know it also gives you something new, like it gives you purpose, right? Because you know the, we're in this together is also such a great title because it's like exactly how I feel about this whole Corona crap, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, like sometimes I think, are we really in this together? I mean, for some people, it's definitely a bigger problem than for others. Yeah. Like I, I consider myself very lucky because, yeah. you know, even if I can't play any shows or tour, which has been a huge part of my life for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years, whatever, mm -hmm. since I was a teenager, uh, I can still, you know, make money to pay my rent and I have mm -hmm. other things to do to keep me busy and, yeah. focus and um, the yeah. purpose and stuff like that so many right, people they have to be on the front line for example so it, yeah it's definitely harder yeah or maybe they're unemployed there's mm -hmm. you know, familiar situations so it's yeah. but for the most part i like to think that we are in this together yeah and i think we are in this together even if it's for for some people it's harder or easier or you know like it's still very important i think to sort of bring that message out there that we are in this together and that it's not an individual sort of you know struggle for anyone it's really we are all struggling it's actually kind of crazy to see how much we are depending on each other in this world because you know yeah you can the virus i think has really shown us like well apparently we need to be connected or everything goes to shit you know exactly exactly and, and i think it's also important to empathize with people that are yeah. uh, having a harder time than ours uh, mm -hmm. in this time of absolutely lives. absolutely yeah no so great series and definitely i definitely encourage everyone uh, especially my listeners uh, if, you, if you enjoy this podcast you're definitely going to enjoy the we're in this together series with gap for sure um, so you just said it. Oh, nearly for twenty years you've been in music. So how long have you been uh, making music? Um, I think I started writing music when I was fourteen or fifteen. So mm -hmm. it's I, I'm thirty six now. <laughs> so yeah. it's been a do math. Do the math. And I, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the first songs I wrote were very naive and simple, <laughs> and maybe they were not very good. And um, maybe my, my new songs are not as good. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on the, the way you look at them. But yeah. Uh, yeah, like writing music and playing my own song has been a huge part of my life. I've never been much of a, you know, cover musician. I always wanted to play my own music and write my own songs and yeah. take them on tour and have people to listen to them. Yeah, exactly. Really, like, your, it's your words, your message that's in your, in your, in your songs and it's my outlet for sure for yeah, anything yeah. i have inside to share with the people yeah in the world and so you're saying so okay i was 14 when i started writing my music were you also already vegan at that time or is that is that came in later in your life that came in later i became a vegetarian when i was 20 i think 2005 yes and then for a couple of years I stayed a vegetarian that after a couple of years of processing the whole idea i could see i mean i want to be, i don't want to use the big word but like it's the flaws of that choice mm -hmm. because there were animals and they were definitely left out of the of the equation um, mm -hmm. some animals that were still being exploited because of that choice i mean th that definitely has a huge impact if you're a vegetarian it's still a huge impact but for some animals it's it's not it, yeah. there's no there's no change and so after um, couple of years pretty much i i thought well the right thing for me to do is to go vegan and it's something i can do and it would make me feel at peace with myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because is it fair to say gab that most of your songs are about veganism as well or at least like these sort of political and social issues and or um, maybe I, I wouldn't say like um, there are artists that are mainly focused on, you know, talking about veganism and having songs about animal rights and um, the way that we, we treat the environment or the animals. It, I'm not sure I can say it's my case. I mean, I have songs that are about that and definitely that can transpire from my songs. Um, and maybe in some, some records are more, let's say, political than others. Some mm -hmm. records uh are more direct in that sense but for the most part of like i present myself in my songs and i consider myself to be uh, 
a politically politically aware person and i think that if you listen to my songs even if they're very personal in some parts in some lyrics that you can tell that i have some sort of background and definitely being a vegan and being passionate about you know animals and the environment and the impact we have and the relationship we have with with them it's it's very important you can tell from my songs there are definitely songs that are very spoken about it, like empathy for example from never look back it's about uh, the way we treat animals mm. um uh, the end of the line on my first lp uh in the, in the last record i don't really have like songs about this but there's a there's a song that says um um basically i, I can't really can't call my own lyrics now but <laughs> it says like we we need to keep uh in cages every every piece of nature we, we like we, we need to keep everyone and everything in cages we need to dominate that nature yeah. and it it's it's about the environment it's also about mm -hmm. the animal yeah. we have this weird urge to prevail on anything that is not human sometimes and mm -hmm. definitely this is completely wrong yeah yeah totally 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 and and so because even your name already says it like get de la vega it's pretty it's pretty you know in a way like okay i know what he's you know i know what he's about you know kind of thing when did that sort of uh, when did you start like singing or or making your music under that name was it always your name uh no um because i used to play in a hardcore punk rock band called the smashers we we chose our name when I was 16 or 15, so that was a very bad name. Anyway, uh, and that kept going for a while. Um, but since 2011, uh, actually thanks thanks to Keegan, uh, Keegan Kuhn, I used to play uh, as True Nature back then. So he came on tour in Europe and I set up a show for him. And actually, I think it's when I met Miguel. Um, then I remember that I... I, the day after we did like at my place and I got my acoustic guitar, I say, I'm starting writing some acoustic guitar, some acoustic songs myself. So, and I, and I played one and Kika said, oh, you should play a show for me, with me next time. I say, okay, we'll, we'll see about that. Then a couple of years after that, uh, he came back on tour and say, I want to play a show, your own town, Brescia, and I want you to, to play that show. So I put some songs together and that was basically 2011. I think, and that wasn't supposed to be like an ongoing gig. It was supposed to be like a one-time thing. Mm. But when I announced that I was playing my uh, my first acoustic show in my hometown, someone from the previous show on Keegan's tour got in touch with me and said, you, you need to come over and play a, a show in Trento, you know, still in Italy. And at the summer, I started playing shows, and then all of a sudden, the next year, I was on tour, and yeah. I put out a seven-inch, and blah 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 lots of stuff came later amazing. amazing so basically we have a decade of gap de la vega now then if it's uh, it's 20 yeah. <laughs> i'm not sure what if i'm gonna celebrate anything around the, the 10th anniversary because it's in june it was my yeah. first show and i'm not sure i'm gonna do anything but <laughs> we'll see we'll be super cool we'll be super yeah cool. At least I'm gonna post something online. That's yeah, of course, for sure. That's a, it's kind of it's quite a thing. It's quite a thing because I don't I wouldn't even know your real name. What is your real name? Gabriele, <laughs> which is Gabriel basically. Yeah, it's I was but yeah, and and you have and you have also you have a beautiful Italian last name then. Gab? Yeah. What yeah. is it? Di Grado. Di Grado. Oh, yeah. That's also that also is already an artist name if you ask me. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's a last name from the south. My my father's from the south, it's from mm. Sicily, and he moved to to the north when he was younger. And uh, so, but for example, my my cousins in Canada they have English names and Italian last names, and it's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Italian Canadian stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super. But it's super cool. But I, I think, you know, I also love the whole Gap de la Vega because it really is, you know, it's a persona or something where, you know, you feel like, you know, I don't know. I really like that. I, I think it's a great artist name. It really suits you and your message, you know. So I think. I guess. I, I mean, it came out kind of as.